We've only got the one and only Norman Greenbaum on with us today. How are you, sir? I'm good, thanks. Now, Norman Greenbaum is, of course, an American singer-songwriter best known for writing and performing the 1969 number one song, Spirit in the Sky. But you knew that. So, first of all, Norman, how did you originally get into music in the first place? Well, I was growing up in Boston, and I liked mm. music, uh, in, uh, middle school and high school, yeah. and I liked it so much, I went and got a guitar and learned how to play, and I liked to write, so I wrote some songs and took it from there. And so when I started to go to college in Boston, uh, there were lots of little clubs to play acoustic music. And so that's how I started. Yeah. And do you remember what the first song you ever wrote was? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've been asked. I, yeah. I, I just can't remember. Mm. And of course, you were in a band called Dr. West's Medicine Show and Junk Band. Was that quite early on? or That was. That was uh, after Boston, I moved to Hollywood. Uh, mm. Los Angeles and uh, started a band with some people that I met and that was the Dr. West band yeah. and uh, that was our first recording uh, that band uh, we did our first recording yeah and what songs did you have with them well we we did a song called the eggplant at eight Chicago oh, yeah. and the band was uh, sort of a jug band mm. and uh, we were kind of goofy and I wrote a lot of goofy songs at, at that time yeah. uh, most uh, jug bands back then, uh, just did cover versions of old uh, jug band folky type blues songs. Mm. But I was the only one that did original songs. So we mm. got signed rather quick. And uh, everyone kind of liked the eggplant at eight Chicago. So we recorded it. And it, it made the charts. It, it got yeah. up to number 50. Well, hey, and I guess at the time, because that was before you wrote Spirit in the Sky, yeah. did you think that you could do better at that point? Or was that your biggest, proudest moment at that point? Well, uh, I, I was liking that moment. And, yeah. and we went on to tour and play uh, many, many clubs and everything mm. and some concerts. Uh, but, you know, a lot of bands kind of get tired of doing what they were doing and yeah. kind of want to change things a little bit. Really. And so I got to that point where I, I didn't didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to go more legitimate and in, into mm. rock and roll. So I left the band and started uh, forming rock and roll type bands. Yeah. And what were some of those bands then that you formed? Well, basically, I, it, it was me as, as as the name of the group <laughs> uh. with with a, a set, with people that were in the band with me. But mm. I went by we went by my name yeah. and um, we did OK. We got some jobs and played some clubs and uh, took it from there and it was going pretty good. And I was playing at the Troubadour in uh, West, La West Hollywood, uh, which is quite a famous club. Yeah. And uh, a producer came up to me after the set and he said, I like your music, uh, let's talk. I have a record deal. I have a production deal rather with Warner Brothers Records mm. at the time. And also, he was the producer of the Love and Spoonful. Oh. And he had had, like, many, many hits. Among yeah. some other people, too. But he was most famous for that. And I said, sure, I'd love to talk to you about that, because I, I, I knew of uh, them. Yeah. And so we did, and, and we got together and came to some agreements. But he wanted me to move up, up to San Francisco, <clears throat> And work with him uh, on 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 music, mm. uh, but he wanted me to just come alone and have me signed as a single artist. So unfortunately, I had to disband the band, and I moved there. I already had written "Spirit in the Sky," yeah. and uh, we took it from there. Yeah, and that's interesting having a band that's under your name because a lot of people would just assume that it's just a solo person doing this. Right. Well. Uh, 
and lots of people did do it. Yeah, uh, I I was most I I was known just by my name as 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 a singer songwriter. Mm. That's the way I started, and uh, in between bands and this and that and the other, I still did that. Yeah. So I was known as that, and and when I formed the bands, uh, they knew that it was just going to be called me. Yeah. And but they would get you know lots of credit and yeah. shares and stuff. Yeah. So they got what they signed up for. Yeah. So of course the song that most people know you for is "Spirit in the Sky," which was a number one hit in 1969. What was the process of coming up with that song? How did you create it? Well, it it happened over a period of time. Mm. Uh, Musically, uh, I had been fooling around with the music you know from the song, but Mm. I didn't know what to do with it. Uh, In terms of the lyrics, I was a fan of country music, and uh, I would listen to it a lot and Mm. also watch... uh, country shows on TV at the time and I came across a singer but I kind of knew who he was named Porter Wagoner and uh, back then he had his own show and uh, about 20 minutes into the show he always did a religious song and at the time, I was I was quite a prolific writer, if I may say so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I listened, I said, that's kind of interesting. I've never done that. Mm. And so I said, well, you know, I can do that. And so I did. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I, I, I basically tried some different arrangements and different styles. And then I said, well, gee whiz, what if I put it to this? music i've had laying around in my head Mm. uh, maybe that'll just fit and it did yeah so that's the way we recorded it (laughs) yeah and it's such an instantly recognizable song as well the moment you hear that distinctive distorted guitar right at the start you know what song you're listening to don't you yeah it it is and uh, still to this day i mean people can go i can name that song (laughs) in one note so. Yeah, even for younger generations as well, I think it stands up more than a lot of songs from the 60s. Well, it, it really has. Uh, it's been phenomenal uh, that it has. Yeah. Uh, it was a very good production mm. and it's very different and the sound sort of fits anywhere yeah uh, it doesn't sound like other music back then mm. and and then on uh it just it was its own thing as they say yeah and how did you manage to get that distinctive distortion sound because it's probably hard enough even now when technology has progressed so how did you manage to do it like 50 years ago <laughs> Well, back then we didn't we didn't have the technology as as we do today. But yeah. uh, some of the technology then uh, people are looking back and want it again. They they mm. like the sound of music on vinyl, and and some of the ways that people recorded when, when it was much more alive rather than so controlled. Yeah. And I had a friend who. Uh, he built things for, uh, musically for, for yeah. bands. He, he knew how to build things, stuff, equipment. Yeah. And uh, so he built, he had built a uh, fuzz box for me. And yeah. that's what I used. Yeah. And uh, I finger picked, which a lot of people who have tried to do it, uh, they, they always use a pick. Mm. And and it was the it was the finger picking from folk music that I knew, and holding out the note. It's been and and it's a little goofy, yeah. and so uh, a lot of people ha- have a problem uh, playing my my goofy little parts. <laughs> yeah, they try though. <laughs> yeah, it's been covered. It's been covered a bunch of times, mm. as you probably know. It was mm. number one two more times in England by two other groups. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, because sometimes. I search for it in my music collection and I get some weird versions that I don't want. Oh, yeah. Well, there's always weird versions. <laughs> uh, but the version by Doctor and the Medics mm. uh, reached number one in England and uh, all over Europe. Yeah. And that was that was that was pretty good. I, I still uh, correspond with him and nice guy. And so oh, yeah. that was pretty cool. 
And after that, uh, there was a gentleman named G- Gareth Gates. Oh, yeah. And and he had something to do with a TV show they called the Kumars. Mm-hmm. Or they, they backed him up on it. It was kind of a interesting uh, version. But yeah. that also went to number one. And so uh, the song itself has been uh, number one in England and Europe three times. Yeah, which definitely. is cool. And it's such yes. a interesting thing for Gareth Gates to do a cover of it because he kind of does more soppy love songs normally. So he must have seen something he liked in your song. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it, I guess it took took him away from uh, <laughs> what what he does. Yeah, but boy, mm. it was a big hit. Yeah. Do you ever get kind of annoyed that you wrote loads of other songs, but you're only re Really known for the one. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, not anymore, hmm. but uh, I, I did <laughs> at, <laughs> at many times in the past. Yeah. And why do you think that your subsequent songs didn't chart as well? Is it just that people were perhaps expecting the same thing again and didn't get it? Absolutely. They they wanted uh, something as powerful as that. Yeah. And the bottom line is how. How <laughs> you know it was so unique mm. and uh, su- such a different type of recording. Where where do you go? So wherever mm. I went, it, it was difficult. But except playing live <laughs> and in concert and in clubs, uh, we did very well mm. with our other material. And of course, uh, it was easy to play "Spirit in the Sky" for fifteen to twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, because uh, people liked it so much. Mm. And I guess maybe releasing your best one so early perhaps or if you'd released the subsequent ones earlier maybe they could have done better because you maybe peaked a bit too early i don't know well uh actually uh warner brothers did release some other songs from the album and they did not do well yeah. uh f- until they finally agreed to release spirit in the sky as a single mm-hmm. and that was released uh late in 1969 and we basically had to wait until after Christmas because uh, Christmas gets a little busy with other music and mm. whatever. <laughs> and so uh, the beginning of the next year, 1970, uh, radio stations took to it. Yeah. And of all the songs you've written, do you have one that is your favourite? And is it surprising? Well, I mean, I, <laughs> that's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Not hard to answer. Mm. Yeah, OK. Not too I surprising. mean, I have lots of songs I really <laughs> like mm. uh, and like and like singing and uh one called lucille got stealed yeah and and uh we do it now uh, when we play but uh but really it's my favorite along with a couple million other people (laughs) glad to be one of them yeah and are you still performing then and writing new music well not writing uh, hardly but Mm -hmm. um we do we do still perform of course we were set back by the virus yeah and we're just getting back together uh with a new band Ooh. and so we're we're in rehearsal and we're hoping things calm down a little bit more and uh yeah. to get back to playing yeah definitely and when do you think that will be <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's a great question uh, <laughs> I'd like to know that also. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Hopeful, hopefully mm, yeah. by the end of the year. Yeah, that's what we said last year, isn't it, though? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were we were just about ready to do a whole lot of things last summer. Oh, yeah. And, of course, uh, everybody just had to uh, stop. Mm, yeah. But now, now, uh, now it's starting up again uh, yeah. with protocols and, and people are taking care. Yeah. And so it's starting so that's good yeah it can't be too much longer because i think people will go mad well uh we're all vaccinated um and still take precautions and Mm. uh, don't let people come up and hug us and and things like that and meet and greet and all that but uh you know we're most bands are have become quite sanitary on stage and uh 
learned how to deal with with all that closeness that they had before and and it's okay we've been out to a couple concerts just just as patrons and uh they went well for yeah. for the bands yeah it's good to be safe because you don't want to end up visiting the spirit in the sky too early absolutely good way to put it <laughs> yeah. yeah so what else do you like to get up to in your spare time when you're not performing and making music do you do anything else or is music your life well uh people people over the years thought i was a goat farmer oh. which uh wasn't exactly true <laughs> uh but back then when the song was happening i mean basically i was a musician and toured mm. my my ex-wife at the time was the person that wanted to raise goats rather than me yeah. but you know i did it uh when i was around which was you know what did i do i don't know yeah. <laughs> clean the cave <laughs> clean the barn <laughs> and uh, but um i got somehow people you know when you do interviews People when they when they go back and write, uh, they kind of mix up things. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, uh, word got around that I was a goat farmer before <laughs> I was into music, and then I went back to goat farming. Hmm. But it wasn't the, the truth. Uh, I was I did music before and after and during. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> and I like to I like to have a garden is yeah. what I do. And uh, I have a garden every year when there's sun, <laughs> and uh, we do that, and it's it's a pleasure. And uh, when when music uh, is happening and has happened, we like we like to give back. So we do a lot of uh, we do work and raise money for uh, different causes, yeah. and I, I like to do that. Yeah, definitely. Do you have any other projects coming up that you're working on? Well, uh, other than the band, not really. Mm. Uh, I suppose, if, you know, uh, the virus is still with us and mm. uh, we're still, you know, in, to stay safe. I mean, we don't want to get involved with too much. No. Not yet. <laughs> but who knows? You know, things happen. And mm. uh, but, I'm, you know, I'm into the culture of, of the county where I live. And uh, I've I used to. Uh, go to the fairs they call them fairs here <laughs> and uh i would enter uh, pl uh flowers plants and i've got about 20 blue ribbons for that so that's been a good hobby for me yeah. but of course uh, the last two years they've had to keep <laughs> shut be, be shut down yeah that sounds like and fun. plus i i like horse racing oh and uh so I, I sponsor a race. I've been doing that for over 20 years wow. at the fair. And uh, so, uh, and I like to do a little gambling on the horses. <laughs> yeah. and I've, I, we do it on the uh, internet now. And yeah. sometimes I watch the races from England. Mm. They have them. Oh, and, yeah. And, and, the, and the jumpers and everything. Yeah, that's always fun. The Grand National every year in April. Well, the Ascot's pretty big, right? Oh, yeah. Royal Ascot, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a big one. Yeah, so I, I enjoy that. Uh I've always liked that. One when I was going to school, uh, one year uh, in the summer, I had a job at a racetrack near Boston. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was sort of near it, and I always had a liking for it. Yeah, definitely. Well, where are we able to keep up to date with you if we want to do that, and also just listen to all your music that you've released over the years? Well, there's compilations here and there. Uh, yeah. a, a new uh, organization has taken over uh the uh distribution of the uh the compilations and the reissue of the original album mm. and uh, they're called concord music mm. and uh they're available um i'm i'm work i i have an acoustic uh album that i did uh two albums after spirit in the sky yeah. uh that i'm working on to redo with a bluegrass band uh, we're we're trying to work that out okay. uh, so that's a project i might get uh into uh in the near future 
And uh, if everything calms down and uh, people are uh, offering a, a decent tour for the band, we'll be out there and yeah. hopefully play a bunch in Nashville. We, we really want to play in Nashville. Oh, yeah. So I still have a lot of acoustic songs and songs that I've, I've rearranged a bunch for country music and then do the rock and roll ones. And of course, finish up with our 15 minute version of yeah. <laughs> Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess when you start this tour, maybe we from the UK can even come because fully vaccinated people are going to be allowed to the US very soon. Yeah, uh, I understand that's, you know, being worked on. Mm. And uh, I'm in touch with the people from uh, Doctor and the Medics. Ooh. So uh, it would be really uh, interesting just to go there myself, hook up with them and mm. some other people we've met over the years. Uh, 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 that we know from there that either would either take my band or put a band together there uh, just for a few for a few shows and to Dr. Maddox and me that'd yeah. probably go over pretty well yeah that sounds like a great idea yeah so yeah. that's in the back of our head we'll see how that works uh, once everything loosens up and we can travel and f feel safe about it mm. Because uh, I'm, you know, I'm on the other side of 50, so <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I, I, I really want to be careful. I'm, he mm. I'm heading towards 80, so. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. I feel fine, but, mm. you know, you always want to be safe. Yeah, definitely. You bet. You bet. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks very much for joining us on the show. It's been great talking to you. Well, thanks very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it also.